Hey guys, <laughs> I did check to make sure the audio is working fine this time around, so haha, <laughs> joke's on me. Um, so what I'm going to do today for this video is um, I'm going to go into a bit more about what it takes to make, render, edit, and just in general use and know how to use. Uh, uh, 3d printers and various other things this isn't necessarily a guide but it's just an idea to explain to you guys the things that i have to go through just in order to not necessarily get a hundred percent print but just how i handle customers orders slash uh, my own models for my own armies so we first start off with the project in mind. In this case, I'm going to be taking a great unclean one, which is the Nurgle Chaos God. And so what I'm going to do now, I am the legal owner of all the models in my collection. OK, which means I legally own all of these. OK, these were not illegally acquired. These were purchased by me from modelers and or all come with disclaimers. Okay, so, uh, namely, I purchased them from the sculptors directly. And so, as you can see, I have a rather large collection of different projects and different things. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my Chaos. And like I said, I've got tons of other different style models, different shoulder badges, you name it. Case in point, I've even got stuff for Death Guard armies. Uh, I haven't printed one of these blight haulers yet. I will eventually, um, but just not yet. Right now, I want to work on a great unclean one. So I've now got to find my Chaos Demons, which is here. And then we've got this great unclean one, who is who has been split into three separate models by myself. Now, this one is lacking in the detail so i won't be using this one per se because this one was designed to be used in epic scale so it's like tiny tiny and i just blew it up and it distorted the model so i won't be using that one but what i will be using is i'm going to go into here now this is another model that i purchased directly from dark gods models and i use it as a demon prince now i like these wings now, I actually have these wings printed on my Chaos Chaos Knight. They're actually on his shoulders. Um, so it gives him a very Nurgle fly sort of look. Love those wings. Thank you, Dark Gods, for that. Um, and the base isn't that bad either. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open up. Just I just want to show you the, 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 the base for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my web gonna drag and drop one second guys there we go so I'm gonna drag and drop it down so you can see it and Thank you. And this is the base designed to go with that miniature. Okay, so you can understand how bases are rendered and whatnot. Now, I use Chidubox 1.93. This is not Chidubox Pro. This is just regular Chidubox. Okay, now there's a reason why I don't use the Pro version. Um, there's also a reason why I don't use Lychee anymore. I used to use Lychee Slicer, but Lychee Slicer started giving me insane errors on my prints i tried reaching out to the guys on the discord i got no support no help no nothing and i was like you know what? i'm not paying you guys any more money each month so i axed the program out and now i just solely work with chidu box uh and a few other tools now so we're gonna find our great unclean one that we're gonna be using so demons demons where did I put you? Hmm. It's not that one. And I don't think it's this one either. 
No, this is a Warhammer Fantasy uh, Nurgle. Okay, our Greater Demon. Uh, no. Give me a second, guys. I think. Not Grand Chungus. No, wait. Is it? Yeah, it is Grand Chungus. There it is. Grand Chungus. <laughs> I don't know why they're called Grand Chungus, but they just are. Now, I do have some uh, just basic great unclean ones, as you can see, all with different weapons and different poses and whatnot. So I'm actually going to pick uh, one that's going to stand out. Now, this one, this one is pre-hollowed, if I remember correctly. This one is pre-hollowed. Yeah, see, that one's pre-hollowed. So now all i got to do is add some holes to it. Now, in order to hollow out a model, you would just click on here. And then you would also choose the wall thickness of the miniature. Uh, and if you want infill or no infill, um, infill on some printers will make the print take longer on some printers it won't it, it all depends on your printer your print settings i will be printing this miniature on the uh, flash forge uh, an 8.9 photo photo forge and so i'm going to click none and so we're going to let it hollow it out again just double to double check and make sure Remember, always take a quick break for a sip of coffee. And you could always listen to a good audio book. You know, shameless plug here, audi Audible. You could always sponsor me. And uh, let it run it through its render. There we go. So there, now the model's completely hollow. But problem with hollow models is resin will get trapped inside it. When you hollow something out on a resin 3D printer, Unlike a FTM printer where it prints from the top down, uh, as basically you've got the bed and the bed moves or the head moves to print your model. Okay, so that's fine. It can be hollow. However, resin 3D printers are the reverse, which means they dip the plate into liquid. And liquid, like air, will go anywhere the least resistance there is. So if you've hollowed a model, okay, Eventually, when, say, the hand gets finished, there's going to be trapped resin inside the palm, inside the arm, inside the belly, and they will produce gas. That gas will cause the model to crack and split, and it's going to look horrible. So what you need to do is you need to come up with drainage holes. Now, for me, what I do is I... I because no one's going to purposely look under a great unclean one's skirt unless you're a bit of a perv. So, <laughs> what I'm going to do is we're going to make a 4 mil hole right... Are you... Do you mean too deep? Too deep? It wouldn't be that deep. Okay, so... Make one in his feet. And again, it's fine if you want to. And the best part about these is you can actually, un you can use muddling putty to fill them in and various other things. Now, I like to use, like I said, I like to put the holes in places where they're not going to be seen. And for some reason, it's not liking either the depth is it the depth it's not liking? It's too deep. Fail. Not hollowed out. Or too deep to dig. Okay. Alright. Fair enough. So it's telling me that that section of the model is going to be quite thick. That's fine. What about up here? Okay. So you can always, like I said, you can always adjust the depth of the hole. And again, there we go. What this does is this will allow the resin 
to be washed, cured, and able to leave the inside of the model. Now I'm going to check another few few places, like so that will get the body up in there. Now I'm just thinking, where else would it? You know what? Let's put one in the arm and one on the back of the arm. Oh, I don't want to do that one. I can... There we go. We'll put one on the back of that arm there. Now I would also put one up in the shoulder up here. There we go. No, just the one, I think. And there we go. So now it's hollowed. And now we've got to look at orientation of the model. Now, the orientation of the model will dictate uh, the angle, case in point. Now, some programs will give you smart orientation, where it'll start orientating the model to the best of its calculated abilities. It uses machine learning and various other things. And that's all well and good for some printers. But I don't, I don't suggest that a lot of people do that because it's great for initially creating models. But I'll show you that I'll show you a problem that I have with people um, doing that on their prints. One second, let me just find it's in here. It's not there. Yeah, you know, case in point here, I'll, I'll show you this one. Where are you? Okay. Now I'm going to show you a few minis that were that used auto supports and why you shouldn't use them. Okay. So bear with me guys while I get them because you're going to see a reason why you should never do certain things when it comes to your pre-supported miniatures, especially if you are trying to sell them, okay? Case in point, this is one of the, the biggest ones of all, okay? This miniature that you see over here, okay, so we're gonna, so this miniature that you see over here, okay, that is far too many supports for a miniature of its size. What I mean by that is there's marginal overhangs, because if you, if you look upside down a mod, on a model, you will see uh, little red specks in certain aspects that will tell you where your overhangs are and various other things once you scan the model. Now. I've actually added my own supports to these models and they've come out crisp and beautiful. I have a box full of them ready to go for my Chaos Renegades. But the point is, when I first bought these models, I had a hell of a time because my printer, my original six inch printer, ended up fusing some of these supports to the actual models and I wasted about eight or nine miniatures because the supports could not be broken away. Because that's just way too many supports. Way too many. Okay? So you want to lower the amount of supports. Okay? So, way too many. Absolutely way too many. Now, the problem with this one, okay, support amounts seems about right. It's the base. This shoehorn style base is going to cause resin suction cups okay let me explain as i said before because you are lowering okay a model into resin just like water and air if it gets trapped somewhere it is going to act like a suction cup so when your bed tries to pull up it's going to pull the FEP sheet up with it until something gives. Either the model's going to give 
or the FEP sheet's going to tear. Okay, now you can clearly tell that the 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 the, the seller of this model. Now again, I'm I'm not calling out the sellers. I'm not calling out the 3D sculptors. I just want them to understand that you do not ever build a skate base. That's what this is. It's called a skate base. Okay, you never ever 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 with a resin 3D printer use a skate base because that right there is a huge suction cup now if i've got multiples of this guy on my print bed okay so say say i want multiples okay so i've i've gone ahead and and print you know clicked a couple you're starting to see the issue now right this is all one huge suction cup. Every single one of them are going to act like octopus tentacles. And it's going to start scarring and pulling and tweaking the FEP sheet. The FEP sheet. Okay? In which case, case in point, I've, I've seen printers, resin printers, pull the entire vat up. Okay, because the suction cups on 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 the prints are re fecking ridiculous. All because the designer of the models threw their program in Lychee and clicked auto support because that's what Lychee does with their auto supports. You feckin' busted. I even know what program you use. You use Lychee Slicer. Because Lychee Slicer automatically puts your prints out with a skate. With a basic suction cup. Why? And when I tried to point this out to the Lychee Slicer guys, I was ignored. When I went through six FEP sheets trying to print one demon prince because the skates that it kept coming up with from lychee slicer caused the sheets to tear and then destroy my screen and then all of a sudden they're saying oh it's your settings no it's not my settings it's physics it's exactly that physics stop putting skates on your miniatures okay if you're going to attach a base okay use a flat one again i'll explain it through physics so we're going to delete every single one of these annoying little heretic bodies we're going to slide our great unclean one onto the print bed now blue is goo it means go it's green you're all good okay green means it's going to physically attach to the base it's leveled on the base okay so the model's actually going to stay upright without the need of a, of, a, of a display base but i'm going to be printing a display base for it as well anyway but the point is okay now if i was to print this model as is this arm wouldn't print that arm wouldn't print and half the head wouldn't print because there's no support structure. There's no lattice to hold it up. The best way to describe uh, 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 supports is, is scaffolding or, or framing for a building. Okay, if you want your building to maintain its physical structure while they're working on the interior, the exterior has to be held up with scaffolding, with, with, with braces. And that's exactly what this is. Now, again, please... If you are a designer or a maker or a builder for any kind of model, for, for whether it be my mini factory, whether it be Colts 3D, whether it be where, wherever, okay, please, for the love of God, don't add skates. Now, I will explain. I always leave my ZI at five. Why? Because I've got quite tall printers. If your printer isn't as tall, you can lower that. Now, I also use light supports, which means because the model isn't solid, 
I would clearly go with a heavier support structure. But because the model's hollowed, it doesn't need to be beefed up. Max I would use is medium. But for this example, I'm only going to use light. Now, where it says raft, see the raft shape? See where it says skate? Okay. That's the one I told you not to use. Do you not see the lip around the edge? Do you see that? That's what's going to cause the suction cup. Let me move my camera real quick. Okay. This is going to cause the suction cup. Stop using skate. Stop. Just stop. It shouldn't even be an option, okay? Unless you are using an FDM printer, okay? But this is a resin printer, which means even the fact that there is a settings option in Cheetubox and all these other software that you clearly tell the software it is a resin printer, it should automatically disable skate raft shapes, but it doesn't please just please builders stop using it just stop using it okay you want none okay none click raft shape none you'll see exactly what i'm i'm talking about now it's going to take a few minutes for it to add the supports bear in mind my machine is 32 gigs of ram 12 gig graphics card it's designed for gaming not data crunching i'm only using i'm using an amd ryzen 7 i should be using like a uh, an intel because intels are more designed for data crunching as where amd is more designed for gaming but this one this computer has my better monitors and my better webcam so it's just better for me to do it this way my other machine that does all my data crunching is over there, and that's my encoding PC. That has an Intel processor. That used to do all my 3D rendering, but it's now regulated to just doing my um, uh, encoding for YouTube and my video editing. So it's going to take a few minutes. I might speed this bit up. There we go. Now, look. No feckin' suction cups. None. None not one not one suction cup now all that red is possible overhangs okay now notice even the internals like the teeth have support lines okay not even his under titty even his under titty we we'll need a little bit of support. So let's, let's give his under boob a support. Here you go. Here's a, here's a resin one, run, one, a resin wonder bra. There we go. Learn to speak. All right. So I'm even going to add a little support for that horn. Not that it's going to need it. I'm just adding it to add it. And you can see the difference straight away just from the base. Now that bell is going to be probably a bit of an issue. And that's fine. Let it be the issue. Let it be an issue. Okay. These overhangs. So it's advising that you put a support. There we go. It's advising that you put a, a support there. Same as the teeth. It's asking for some overhang supports for the horn. There we go. And of course, it's asking for some advice on the teeth. Teeth. There we go. Doesn't matter if Nurgle is missing a tooth or two. Because it is Nurgle. But this is what a lot of builders don't want to do. You want to take the time to construct a beautiful model but at the same time you can't be asked 
to just put decent supports on the model. What's, what's, what's wrong with you? Seriously. And there you go. That is a hollowed out greater demon. Okay. Supported. With, with drainage holes. And so now we can now go back one to this tab. Okay. Now you always want to double check your settings. I always go to my advance. And I want to turn. Hmm, let's see what gray level do I want. I don't want eight. I'll put it at four. And put AA at eight. And I'll put that at four as well. Image blur. No, we don't image we want image blur. Right, now those options are for something if you want a more crisper detail in your miniatures. I'll explain more under those at a later stage. Um, now, of course, we're not using white resin. We are using grey, Flashforge grey resin. Oh, it's asking for zero grey level then. Okay, fair enough. If that's what it's asking for, that's what it's going to get. All right. So then we, now what we're going to do is we're going to click slice. And now what it's doing is it's, it's taking snapshots, PNG snapshots, okay, and then converting those snapshots into G code. Okay, so it's taken 1,690 photos, okay, there we go. Now, I could have it show me where there's going to be isolated layers. It will detect the layers. It's, it's going to tell me there's going to be quite a few. Again, it's literally now scanning each individual PNG that it's just taken. Plus, I'm also recording, so it's going to take a while. This is going to be a bit of a long video, guys, so I'm just giving you a heads up. There we go. Now, of course, it's telling me it's fi uh, finding a lot. And that's that's fine. Let it. And it's also saying it's going to take about 6 hours and 42 minutes to, to, to render. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to click Save. All right? And I'm going to put it on my desktop. And we're going to name it Gal Hollowed. So we're going to name it. We're just going to name it, you know, let it write the file. That's a derivative song from the dating game that was used for Jeopardy. It's actually da 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 little no factoid for you all 
Right, let's tell me right was successful. So we're gonna close this out now because we don't need UD box right now. We don't need this right now. What we need is this and another program called UV tools. Now, of course, there's a new version available. So what we'll do is we'll update. You always want to update your software, especially when it comes to things like UV tools or, or uh, rendering tools, things of that nature. You always want to keep your tools up to date. It's about as exciting as watching paint dry. So we're going to unpin the old one, put in the new, put in the new one. Okay, so UV tools. There we go. And then we're going to drag and drop the file. It is going to go through it. Now, it's a FDG file format. The PhotoForge does not recognize that file format. However, the, old, uh, the other 6-inch printer would. Now, what we need to do is we need to click on this little shield, which will be a suggestion. Now, it's telling me that there are some recommendations to try for the printer to help speed up the time. Now, bear in mind, it's saying it's going to take about 7 hours to print. So we click Yes. There you go. Time has already jumped to 7 hours 30. So it's added some more time, but it has actually saved us material. Okay? So bear in mind, it saved us resin, but it increased us time just a little bit. Now, we click on this little issues button, and then we click on detect. It's going to scan through. It's going to take some time. And it's going to eat up a lot of RAM. I mean, right now we're up to almost 3 gigs of RAM just being churned through so the video may be a bit choppy and i do apologize for that guys but it can't be helped because this is literally just brute forcing this and that's detecting resin traps Like I said, guys, I'll probably be speeding this bit up and put in edit. So.
All right, and so we've got a couple of islands and some overhangs and resin traps. Aha, suction cups. Okay, all right, okay. Guess what? We can either drill or solidify. Um, let's solidify those. All right, so then now what we're gonna do is click on this and then click on repair islands, repair resin traps. I've already repaired the suction cup, so that can be done. And there's no, uh, actually we'll leave the remove empty layers up. That will also speed up the print too. Okay, so we're gonna let it run through again. It's gonna take a few minutes guys. So I do apologize about this bit. Looks like we might have to add the, the infill structure because. Okay, guys, um, there was something wrong with that model that I picked for the tutorial. So basically, I picked another great and clean one in that collection. And what I've done is I just cleaned up the model a little bit, uh, hollowed it, added an internal lattice to it, put the holes in it, built these supports, basically what you previously saw. Um, and like I said, I'm now saving the file and we're going to be picking it up from um, inside, excuse me, inside uh, UV tools. So this video wasn't a complete waste of time. <laughs> I'm going to have to open up a window to get a little bit warm in here. Okay, so the file is complete. I'm going to close that down. So we're going to go to our UV tools. And we're going to grab our model. Okay, and then again, we're going to go through the calibration ads. This is for it to just fine-tune the model just a little bit more. Hopefully we'll gain a, a bit more time saved and a bit more resin saved. All right. Now, again, this is going to be the, the section where we're going to have to speed the video up. So...
Okay, so we do happen to have mostly islands. And let's close up the islands, resin traps. Here we go, suction cups. Now, this is what I was trying to explain to you earlier about um, them causing suction cups on the bed. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight them all, and we're just going to go boop, solidify, fill suction cups. There we go. Suction cups are now dealt with. So we don't have to worry about the suction cups ever again. So now we're going to click on the little attempt to repair. Now we've already repaired the suction cups. And like I said, this is what I did earlier in the other model. So I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to come back uh, if anything else comes up for you guys. All right. Okay. So the only thing left is marginal... Um, Yeah, the only thing left is marginal islands. Um, everything else has been detected, fit, and fixed. Um, there's no more resin overhangs. Literally, it's just just islands. So there's no suction cups. There's no resin uh, 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 holes. There's there's literally it's just minor islands, like what you see here and here. Like I said, just minor islands that. Uh, I'm pretty sure won't adversely affect the model so what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to save the model and there we go and now I'm going to uh, I'm going to convert it to a flash forge file because which that's the only file format that the flash forge recognizes it does not recognize fd uh, uh, fdg um the newer model flash forges do i've got a first generation one which doesn't which kind of sucks but is what it is and so we're just going to save the file and six hours 31 minutes is the average yes we will open it now because we saved the majority of the stuff done to the uh, previous file we've now got to do what we just did to that file to this file it doesn't that the the updates don't carry over if that makes sense so case in point we go to here nothing there now we're going to click detect real quick and if all it detects is islands then we're great if it detects the overhangs and previous other issues that we had from the previous file I'll have to go through and clean those all up again, which really isn't that hard. And like I said, this is going to be a super long video, guys. And, I, and I'm not sorry for it because at the end of the day, I don't do short for format stuff. So if you're here for long format content, I'm your guy. If you're here for short TikTok style stuff, I'm not your guy. I'm not your buddy guy. And I'm not your guy, buddy. Trust me, it's not for me. I like to do long file format because you learn more that way. It also means you can pause the video, go back a few, start it again, and and, and just do what you need to do, if that makes sense. Um, again, I just want to say a big thank you to the fact that I am at just so close to 500 subscribers. It, it, it makes my head spin that there's 500 of you out there. And... It means so much to me. I will be going live uh, later on tonight, hopefully with this model printed. So uh, to you in the future, you know, the model will probably be on my bench right next to my Mortarian getting ready to be painted and added to the Death Guard army. So who knows? <laughs> All right, so yeah, we do have a few things. All right, so these resin traps, let's check them out real quick. Okay, they all look like they're internal line, which means it's the inside of the body, which you will get from, from doing an auto hollow like that. And the best way to answer all of those is, and I'll show you the quickest way, is you go click on resin traps, you can go control A, so you highlight them all, solidify. That's it which means the majority of these. All right, so then now we can go up to detect and just go repair islands and have it just try its best to repair the layers, 
from the solidification, which means, like I said, we, we've made the model hollow, the majority of the model hollow, but in doing so, you're gonna have some issues with the inner linings of the walls, like the inside of the hands, the fingers. If, if the fingers are too big on the model, it's gonna try and hollow out the finger, which is gonna leave a resin trap. So all I've done is say anything over a certain, uh, under a certain size, just fill it, okay? So the internal cavity of the model is going to be hollow. The head, hollow. Tongue, no. Fingers, no. Sword, no. Horns, no. Does that make sense? I've now told uh, UV tools what to make hollow and what to leave unhollow. And that will get rid of 99% of your resin trap issues. Uh, same as uh, specific things like overhangs. Overhangs are going to happen if there's no supports for that for that overhang uh, and easy to fix that is to just add a support to it You find out what layer it's on and in case in point That's what the slider is on here over here is it will tell you what layer it is You then go into your original editing file you then go to that layer add the support save the file again export it rinse and repeat it takes time guys but it's time worth spending and the reason why i say it's time worth spending is because it's time that you know for a guarantee that you do not have to babysit that print you know that it's not going to fail it's you're going to get it right the first time and that's all that matters now in adjusting that we seem to have created a resin trap so guess what we there you go we fill it no more resin trap and there we go. We've actually got rid of a lot of the a lot of the overhangs, but there we go. So I think the file is ready for for, for print. So we're going to go to file. We're going to go to save. We're going to save it. And then I'm going to export the file to my thumb drive. Now my printer does have a LAN connection, so I could technically just print it right now. Turn the printer on, and just let the printer go burr. Now, I unfortunately have to drain the resin because I did a previous print and it, it printed just fine, but I want to examine the FEP sheet. So we are done. All right, it is done. So the file saved. There we go. So here's our files, two files. Okay, there's the original. There's our S svgx so i'm going to go to here i'm going to go to here i'm going to drag and drop it in here now these are other files that i've printed previously on the printer and they've printed just fine yes that is an entire chaos rhino yes that is an entire chaos predator those are over on the paint bench right now as we speak um i will be doing a, a bigger like grand army uh, show off once i've got the majority of the army painted um mostly because that's just how i feel i want to do it i want to release the uh, my goal is to get at least one army painted this year and with me constantly keep adding to my death guard right now it's going to be a pain in the ass so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to physically inspect the printer which means i'm going to come all the way over here and grab my laptop off of it because i was working on that for a friend I'm then going to take the lid off. I'm then going to visually inspect that there's no nothing hanging on in it. There's no bits, there's no things of that nature. I'm also going to check the inside of the resin. I'm going to run a scraper gently across. Oh, we've got something stuck there. So that tells me I do have to drain the vat. And that's fine. Again, that's what that's what this is for. Now I'm going to grab one of my paper filters and a comb, rubber comb. Now before I actually touch the resin, I'm going to grab some rubber gloves uh, I've got some latex free rubber gloves take my ring off my lucky ring 
And so what we're going to do, I'm also going to take my water off as well. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to drain the vat, the resin vat. And I'm going to do some cleaning on the FEP sheet. I'm going to use some dry FPT on the FEP sheet to, to keep the FEP, FEP sheet's life cycle. <coughs> Excuse me. And then next next month, I'm going to order me some extra FEP sheets for that printer. Uh, I've also got a uh, new smart TV coming in for review. That'll be fun, guys. Look forward to seeing that on the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm actually getting back into doing hardware reviews. All right. So, safety first. Safety first. Okay, guys, safety first. Right. So, now, what I'm going to do, untighten the screws just a bit. Lift her up. That's one. That's two. Now, the only downside to the, the Generation 1 uh, resin vats is they don't have a safe port. Uh, what I mean by that is one corner is usually designated as a safe port, which means it's usually got a, like a funnel spout to it that will allow you to pour the resin more safely. This one doesn't seem to have that, unfortunately. Bit of a sucky move there. Flashforge. Alright, so I'm going to let this drain a little bit before it gets spilt anywhere. There we go. Alright. Just going to pull the rest. There we go. Take the plastic scraper, not the metal one. You never use the metal scraper on your FEP sheets, ever. Because that's how you will tear them. I don't care how soft of a metal that they're made out of. FEP sheets made out of plastic. Want to know who wins in a fight between metal and plastic? That's right, metal every time. Now, this is our resin vat. Now, what I'm going to do, this is isopropyl alcohol, otherwise known as IPA, and I'm going to carefully make the lid out the way so I don't break it this is what I'm I use for my FVP sheets is I will use GT85 you can get this on Amazon you can get this at Walmart you can get this at B&Q's it doesn't matter where you are in the world you could get it you get it with the PTFE okay there's two versions. There's one with and one without. You want the one with. Now, this is just paper towel. And what I'm going to do, clean up the lip on the outside first. In fact, let me just angle you down. Oop, there you go, so you can see what I'm doing. Now, normally I don't do this on this table. I do it on the workbench over there. But, as you can see, the isopropyl alcohol cuts through the resin like butter. See? And then all we're doing is we're just, no pressure, no pressure. Look, see, pinky finger, no pressure. Is I'm just letting the IPA cut through it and do its job. Okay. Now, if you're wondering why IPA smells familiar, it's because it's made of the exact same stuff that kills fleas. So as a kid, if you ever, you know, was in, was in primary school here in the UK and someone in your school got fleas and your mum had to basically grab your head and start dunking, you know, flea powder or whatever in your head. Basically, all that is is just IPA. Um, 
IPA can also be used to kill uh, bed bugs because they are of the same family. Fleas and bed bugs are in the same family of insects. And so all I'm doing is I'm just going from corner to corner, corner to corner, now up and down in the center, okay? Now, being very careful because there's static on my desk and also where I, from where I had some pizza for lunch. But we take our GT85, just a couple of spritz, it, spritz. Yeah, love that smell. GT85 is also used as part. Of, you can also get a WD40 variant of GT85. Now, you want to pay attention to where it's to where it's like tearing up, because that's the area where that needs the most love. So, case in point, here and here, which is the center of the FEP sheet, which is an average spot for most sheets. But notice on the edges, it doesn't need it. It just needs it in the center. So don't constantly start cranking in the center. You don't want to do that. You want to start in the corners. Again, no pressure. Just think, think, you know, literally no pressure. And just go from corner to corner. Corner to corner. Do that a couple of times. Just back and forth. No pressure. Absolutely none. I mean, look, here. Two, two pinkies. Okay, no pressure. You not see me crank it down. You just no pressure whatsoever. Okay, and all we're doing is we're we're reintroducing FEP, the chemical, into the plastic. Okay, which is its protective film to allow the light to shine through. Okay, now I'm just gonna wipe away on the sides now as you can see here there's some spent resin that's not good so we're going to wipe that off immediately okay as i said because there's no there's no designated spout corner with these vats which is a shame because they should be now again always toss that away if you've touched resin toss it away don't reuse it toss it okay now that's it. And if you can hear, we've still got our tightness of the drum. So then there you go. And so now this sheet is ready to be used again. So then we take it, we come over, and you always want to make sure that the line that says max is at the back. The reason why is it makes it a lot more easier for you to visually see your fill level. Okay. And by then, this is where you can physically inspect your filter. Case in point, this is where I physically inspect the filter and check. And there is some micro particles in there. Now those micro particles... Okay. can eventually build up and end up piercing through the uh, FEP sheet, which is not good. Now, what we're going to do, put the lid, there we go, howdy howdy, we're going to put the lid back on, and like I said, all this is standard polymer grey from Migaloo. We're going to give it a shake. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine Mississippi, ten Mississippi. You shake it very, very hard for ten seconds. You then pour up until the max line and no more we then take our thumb drive that has our file insert it print 
USB memory and then we go to grit and cling one it's saying 4 hours 43 minutes at current settings give it a few seconds it's loading it up into the, into the memory buffer 5 4 3 2 1 and away she goes now this printer will put out a wee bit of heat so hence that's why I've got the window open but she's on now she's cranking and inside about f four and a half five hours I will have a great and clean one so uh, until then guys I will see you in the next part of the video where I'm holding the miniature in my hands and we'll show you the cleaning process okay guys so I'll see you in a bit hey guys welcome back printer's done so I figured I'd show it to you real time what needs to be done which is the wash and cure now of the mod sorry about that I accidentally hit the uh, stop button but before we do anything like that safety first so taking off my ring taking off my watch the reason why I'm taking off the watch is because resin is a pain in the butt to get off of touchscreen electronics so like your phones thing, things of that nature so I'm going to get some latex gloves now this is before you touch any part of the model anything notice the lid is still on okay the finish time was 4 hours 39 minutes just like it was quoting on the print machine itself so the machine was accurate even though uh, UV tools quoted uh, five hours and some change um, our other software quoted us seven hours the reason why uh, is because again it can only give you a rough estimate very very similar to how how the old-school Windows download estimate used to be where it'd be like oh you've got like five minutes you think okay go make a cup of coffee come back and it's like your download will be done in 34 years you know it's like what the hell's going on same thing it's just an estimate um what can speed it up is how you render the program is how you render the the model another thing that can speed up or slow it down is the is the the, the settings now what i'm doing is i'm just squeezing out any air so it's literally just skin on skin and now i'm going to crack the lid off of my wash box pretty much now i am not fortunate enough to have a cure resin cure system this is a um, uncured what well, uncured slash diluted resin so now we take the lid off And we unscrew the build plate. We then slide the build plate off. And here is our great unclean one. Look at the size of that model. <laughs> it's quite large. <laughs> it's quite a large model looks like we had some minor faults in some areas and that's to be expected uh, but it looks like the majority of the model did actually come out just fine and the detail is immaculate so this is where you can use a metal scraper this is where you can use a metal scraper because again this is metal on metal and notice how See how easy it is to get up and he jumps right in he already wants a bath so we're just gonna scrape off this excess resin because we don't need that I'm now gonna slide the print bed back on acknowledge that the print is finished 
take our lid. I really do have to find my stick on handles and put some handles on that. And now what we're gonna do is I'm now gonna slowly break apart the supports. This is the oh this is the this is the joyous part of oh look how look how just look how beautiful that just came apart you know not here fighting it tugging on it it just genuinely just went and came off okay so then we're gonna put that in the bin because we don't need that we've got some minor little supports that's fine ones on the feet that's fine Nothing on the back. Oh, lovely jubbly. Everything's coming off just so nice, so easy. Yeah, we did. No, oh, no, that horn came out great actually. I thought that horn had uh, become a fail, but it didn't. Uh, we did lose one of the teeth. Actually, we lost two or three of the teeth, but that's fine. That was that was to be expected on the stomach. That was to be expected. Uh, I'm just going over it visually w once real quick. Before I bust out the IPA. The sword came out just lovely. Now bear in mind this is um, it, it in its raw form. Which means there's still uncured resin on the model. Okay. So what I'm going to do is try and find my oh come on I actually am trying to find a light switch real quick so I can turn on the overhead so you guys can get a better view there we go so you guys can see the model a lot better now what I'm going to do is I normally have my IPA in a spray bottle like this but I'm out and so I'm forced to use it in a squirt bottle like this and so all I'm going to do is just gently squirt over the over the body like that and I've noticed that there's a little bit of support left underneath in there so we're just gonna get that off real quick okay there's the hole in the top which is what I was looking for all right so now what I'm gonna do is grab some of my IPA. Now, this is isopropyl alcohol. This is medical grade, 99 slash 100% proof. Now, it is it is safe to handle, but it's not safe to ingest. You don't want to drink this, okay? Just like you don't want to drink bleach, okay? This is a dehydrant, which means it will dehydrate you. That's how it kills bed bugs and lice. It it literally dries them out. As I was saying to you earlier, when you were younger and you got fleas from school, and your mum covered you in head lice, uh, a killer. That's basically IPA. It's all it is. Just isopropyl alcohol. And so now what we're going to do is just gently go over the model. Nice, simple, light stream. Now what I'm going to do is just go inside this hole until I start seeing it run clear. There we go. And then vice versa from the feet until it runs clear from the back like it is now. And all this is is my way of washing out any uncured resin on the inside of him. Now I do have a light box and what that is, is quite literally, it is what it sounds like. It's UV light LED strips inside a metal box. And what that does is exactly what it says on the tin. It will pelt the model 360 degrees with a UV light, which will then cause the model to harden 
very similar to a wash and cure station and there's no wash I'm doing the wash separately that's what this is this is the wash stage but our our great unclean ones actually come out quite nicely um, the only part of it that I consider it is as a fail failure on the print is a couple of the teeth on the stomach but I did say to you it's a great unclean one so no one's gonna bother with that but here you go guys great unclean one so now what I'm gonna do is grab my light box which is underneath my table I should have set it up earlier but I didn't have time to and so what I'm gonna do is let all that IPA evaporate and it will evaporate isopropyl alcohol will evaporate over time now this is a sealed container so the IPA inside it doesn't evaporate and then what I do after a couple of weeks is I will filter that IPA and of course my glove split see my glove split so looks like I'm gonna have to have a shower later always be safe and and be 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 on the side of caution all right so we have a great unclean one now I'm gonna have some just some wipes baby wipes here and I'm just gonna lay it on the table so that the baby wipe can just absorb any excess coming out and I want to grab two more models to show you the size of this great unclean one so we have got down here we've got a chaos space marine rhino right here and we have mortarian right here so the scale is just right and yeah I'm gonna put him on the same size base as Mortarian because he is a monstrous creature and uh, yeah guys so you've seen how it's done from conception of the product of, of the, the program to to uh, fine tweaking the model to then printing the model to finally having the physical model here and uh, this model will be going in my this this model will be going in my death guard army and i look i might even start up a uh, chaos demon army of nurgle for age of sigma i don't know yet but guys i hope this goes to show you that uh, the steps that need to be taken the actions that need to be done to take a model from a stl file to a physical actual model and uh, guys if you're interested uh, please hit me up on the discord uh, and as I'm in the process of revamping my website I do sell the proxies and that's exactly what these are these are proxies okay that's all they are is proxies okay um, treat them as such um, eventually I will be buying a great unclean one but for now this one will do as a stand in proxy uh, if you want some stand in proxies for your army uh, please hit me up on discord and uh, and or leave a comment in the video section down below and i will do my best to help facilitate your needs until then guys keep your shows fine keep your enemies dying and keep your dices rolling cobra commander is out and so is beltraw see you later